Hello, my clay friends. So today we are going to talk about how to make a cup. We're going to discuss a couple different kinds of cup forms and how you can make them. And then we're going to throw a cup and then we're going to trim a cup all right here in this video. All right, so let's take a look at a couple different cup forms. So when we look at some of these cups here, I have a bunch of them kind of lined up here. And here we'll just look at the few different shapes. Now, the great thing about these cups is that no one would really mistake these cups for each other, but they also share some very similar properties that make them really interesting. So we'll first look at this. This is a very basic cup form, but I love this cup. Look at this guy. So this cup is just a basic cylinder, but look at that beautifully hand carved surface. That is just amazing. And the glaze is done really well. So this is all hand carved. So I think that this fairly simple form um, really showcases just this great surface that was put on here. And it has a very flat, smooth bottom. It's made out of porcelain. Look at how gorgeous that is. Now let's just look at the overall form, right? It's pretty obvious. This cup is pretty much straight up and down. So when we take a straight edge, right, a uh, right angle ruler, and we put it up against the side, you see that that cup is de most definitely just a straight cylinder. But I think once again, that that fits what's going on with this surface and the type of cup that it's, what it's used for it is awesome. This is a beautiful cup. Let's look at this next one. So this one also has a flat bottom, but look at this. This one now is wider at the top. It's squared off just a little bit, right? And it tapers as it goes down. And then let's look at this one, right? How much does it deviate from a cylinder? Let's take a look, right? So when I hold up this right angle ruler, you can see that, that this whole cup form that makes it basically as far as not being a cylinder other than it being square, right? It's just only a little bit, right? You can see that all that expression that makes this cup form kind of what it is, right? Partially being square, but also just having that very, very small taper. How gorgeous is that? And just has this kind of flat bottom, really beautiful. This cup is soda fire. Just what a great example of a nice, beautiful cup. Let's take a look at another one. So if we look at this one, this one, this, this one has also been squared off. And let's just look at this one has this great stamping that goes around. How nice is that? This is a Shino that was reduction and then has some carbon trapping going on. Let's look at this overall form, right? It's just kind of a form which is wider here at the middle, right? And then it goes narrower at the top and narrow at the bottom. So let's look at the overall form. What kind of shape is it? Well, let's just bring the straight edge back in and you can see, look at how far that form deviates from being straight, right? Let's look at that. That's so small, right? If you look at that, it being straight and being thing is very small. So all that form, right, of this beautiful form, all that shape, right, that deviates it, that makes it different than being straight is very minute, right? If we look at just how far it comes from top to bottom, you can see there's almost nothing. So all that beautiful form, that beautiful belly, that kind of barrel shape comes from just a little bit of change in form at the top and the bottom. That's, I think that is absolutely amazing, right? So what is the trend here? So what I'm trying to say is that in your cups, when you make a cup out of ceramics, little minute changes in the form mean a lot, right? That for me is where the artistic part of making a cup really comes from. Of course, these cups have great surface design and a whole bunch of other things going on, but today we're just gonna focus on form. So let's look at this slightly bigger cup. Let's look at that. So this, once again, we would not mistake this cup for the other cups. Why? Well, this cup is definitely wider at the bottom, right? It's bigger overall, right? It's wider at the bottom. And then here you can see that it has this great break in the curve and it has this awesome flat trim area and this more giant foot, right? So you can see just that, how that look. This is a piece by Sunshine Cup. Look at how beautiful it is. So let's just look at this, how it breaks, how much it deviates from just being a straight vertical cup. And you can see once again, look at that. That's not even the width of my finger, right? How far that is different than going straight up and down. So once again, all that expression comes from just that little bit of change of there, right? Just that putting in that slight curve coming in, slight curve coming out. That is just awesome.
right? And this this surface, there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of other things going on, but we're just talking about the form. And then look at how big and just juicy and big that foot is. That is just awesome. Right, so yeah, we'll get to the Adam Field Cup here in a second. This is another cup. Just look at those beautiful drawings on here. Whoa, right? So, but once again, we're just talking about the overall form, right? Today, because we're going to throw on the wheel. Let's look at this, right? So, boom, look at how small those changes are. So, like that, right? So, we're kind of, I kind of think I've made my point, right? This beautiful, voluptuous form just comes from those small changes in curve. Now, in general, right, when you're doing super decorative work like this, you generally want a really plain, fairly smooth, flat surface. So, I see why, like, trying to keep this surface from going in and out too much really makes sense. And this is a lot of underglaze pencil and drawing on that surface. That is just beautiful. We, we'll talk about what's going on in this kind of cup in another video. Right? Yes, look at this beautiful one. Oh, I, we love this cup. So, yes, look at that. So, um, you can see once again, though, all this expression, there's just tons of stuff going on here. Look at this beautiful carving. Look at these inside dimple marks. Look at how the glaze is pooling there. Look at there's even carving on the foot. Oh, what a great attention to detail. Look at that. And look at the chop. That is just beautiful. All right, so let's look at the, once again, how far. Oh, look at that. So there's hardly any change right in the curve from vertical, right? So that is just incredible that you can get so much expression out of something that's pretty much straight up and down, right? We'll just keep this here because we love it so much. And then look at this last one. So we haven't really, this is the last form. We haven't really talked about like this tumbler shape that's wider and narrower. So this definitely, right, goes from narrow to wide, right? No handles today, right? And then this is a piece by Matt Long. Let's look at that. Let's see how far off. See, it's not that much. So a lot, a little means a lot, right? There is just a lot of these forms, right, in your expression, and when you're making cups, a little bit goes a long way. So why, why are these cups so vertical? Well, basically, it's just that the vertical cylinder, right, something vertical or something straight up and down, just makes something easy to drink out of, right? If you have something that's kind of straight up and down, when you drink out of it, it's really simple. Think about the opposite. Let's say I was trying to drink out of a wide bowl, right? If I tried to drink out of something that was really open, right, that would mean like I wouldn't get anything, I wouldn't get anything, and then all of a sudden when the fluid got to my face, it would be like a flood, right? I just get would flood it all of all with juice, right? Or whatever I was drinking. If I had a cup going the other way that was really tapered inward, right? I may not get nothing, nothing, nothing. And then in order to get stuff out, I would really have to tip back, right? So kind of generally speaking, right? Most of the cups that we drink out of are pretty straight up and down, right? And but we can get all that expression from that. So let's talk about, let's throw a cylinder and then we'll talk about how we make cups kind of like this that have kind of a belly on the bottom and kind of have this on top. So let's, let me move these things off, off the wheels so I don't break them. All right, so let's get making some. So I am gonna start today with a one pound ball of clay here. And then we'll also talk a little bit about throwing and what I'm doing while I'm throwing. So this is a one pound ball of clay. I like throwing on the wheel head for making cups because I can just lift these off and I'll show you that at the end. So if I don't have to throw in a bat, I'd like not throwing on a bat. I just, cause that's just the way I started. So put that baby down, squash it against the wheel and then we're gonna center. Get a little water on there. So this is a one pound ball of clay. So. Already I thought about the shape and the size of the cup that I want to make. And so I know just from the way I throw that I can get the pot, or the pot that I want out of this one pound ball of clay. So you have to think now as you're throwing, how much clay do you need to start with to make a cup that's about the right size for what you want? So I'm already thinking about all the shrinkage that's going to happen. So it shrinks about 11% and all that. And so I've made a bunch of these kind of cups before. And then when it um, comes out of the firing, it's about the right size. If I start with a one pound ball of clay, I always measure out my clay before I start. So here I'm centering. When you're using, when you're centering smaller pieces of clay, you can have a higher wheel speed when you're centering. 
All right, so here we go up and then back down, All right? So maybe I'll just do one more time. So it looks pretty centered. So how do you tell it's centered? Well, when you, you can tell it's centered when you can see how it's not oscillating around. It's basically when I touch, it's not going woo, 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 woo around. It's centered. All right, so let's go back. All right, so now I'm going to push down and make my push down. So I do this thing where I always flatten out the top just like that. So now this, so I started with my ball of clay, right? And I weighed it out. So I knew one pound is probably enough. The next crucial thing, and I centered it, the next crucial thing is for me to decide how wide do I want this? Because this will determine the width of my cylinder, okay? If I start this, but I wanna make a bigger cup that has a wide that's really wide, from this mound, it'd be very difficult for me to make that out of this mound. I would wanna squash it down lower. If I wanted a narrower cup, I could center this and have this mound narrower. But for right now, for me, about that size, I just know from experience, that is a pretty good size. So let's just measure it, because I have my ruler here. It is about a little bit, it's like three and a half inches. A little bit less than three and a half inches. All right, so now I'm gonna do my opening and go down. There we go. And then I'm gonna check my depth with my needle tool. Let's just check my thickness because I don't wanna to be too thick and I don't wanna to be too thin. Now, if you wanna make a, a, something with a bigger foot like Sunshine Cobb, she has a slightly chunkier, bigger, taller foot, which is really fits with her work, um, then you would wanna leave more thickness down here. All right, so now I'm gonna pull back and open flat here and open it up and I'm gonna open it up flat. So let's just go inside and see what we're doing, All right? So I'm gonna stick my finger inside and pull straight back toward me like this. And I'm watching the inside, making sure that the bottom part down here is flat, right? If there's any problem, see right now, because I can't really get my head in there to see because the camera's in the way, I made that part down too low this part's a little high. So I'm gonna come back and fix that right now. Might as well just stop. If you see things not working out, let's stop and fix that right before we get all the way out to the edge. So I'm just gonna start here in the middle and just push that clay out and down and out to the wall. I want that a flat bottom. There we go. So there, let me feel it one more time. Oh, that feels pretty good now. And then I can continue um, pulling this back. So my fingers are curled out under like this. So let's pull back here. So right here, my fingers are curled under and I'm pulling straight back. So let's look at example. So right here is something that one that's been cut in half. How are my fingers positioned inside? My fingers are curled over like this on the inside and I'm pulling straight back like that. So I want my fingers curled over. So always think about it as if you're pulling back on a rod or maybe if you're water skiing and you're holding on to that, that, um, that, that big, that wooden handle and you're pulling, right? The boat's trying to pull you forward, you're trying to pull back. That's how I think of this curve as I'm pulling like that straight back using a constant pressure. And you can see that my finger fits in, is a little bit undercutting that part of the clay. You see that? So my finger fits in right there like that. And I'm pulling straight back. All right, so let's continue this back. So I'm pull, pull, pull. There we go. So now I can't keep pulling back for forever because eventually I'm gonna pull off this section, right? So I gotta stop there. So right now, this doesn't look quite like this, but it's about like this, you see that? So that's about where we should be at. Okay, so like that, this is a little, if you notice here that this little space between there to there is a little bit narrower than from there to there. So that's looking really good. Now I wanna go back and if I can, I wanna just go back in there and I like fixing up this inside now, smoothing it out really good with my sponge. So I'll take my three fingers like this, like that, try to make them even and I put the sponge in it like that. Let me squeeze out some of this extra water. And then what I'm gonna do is just go like this and just push down on the inside. So I'm not really trying to compress the bottom, although it kind of helps a little bit, but I'm mainly trying to create something smooth. For cups, I have very little S cracking or cracking on the bottom, but I do that. And so for me, that kind of counts as my compression. Sometimes I'll come back down with a rib later when I'm doing the forming and I'll compress up bottom more. But for me, that's good. But I want this bottom clean and flat right now. Um, because later, once I make my narrow cylinder, it's gonna be much harder for me to get in there and fix that. 
All right, so now we get to the raising part. So what is this deal about raising, especially for someone that doesn't really know how to raise? Well, I want to make a straight cylinder boop, that goes straight up and down. Um, the next best thing is if I have a cylinder that actually tapers in a little bit, right? The thing that I don't want to do is have a cylinder that's flaring out because that creates a much weaker cylinder. So straight up and down, ideally, if I need to, I'll have it flare in. So as I throw, I'll throw up and try to make sure that I'm going straight up and maybe even coming up and in, right? Travel in if I can, if I want to. So that may mean it needs to feel like you're pushing harder from the outside as you're doing this. All right, so since this is flaring out a little bit, I sometimes will push this back in Right, just kind of like as if I was centering, I would push this back in. So let's get a different view so that you guys could see a little bit better what I'm doing. Man, I always have a hard time trying to get this view set up. There we go. So you're facing more toward me now. There we go. So let's, so I'm just gonna take this and push it inward a little bit like that. There, so I start my cylinder. So, cause the reason why that was slightly flaring out. So I'm pushing it back in just a little bit like that. All right, so now I'm gonna start my raising. So when I raise, right, to make this taller, because it's a short cylinder right now, I just want it to be taller, thinner, right, and more beautiful in every way. So that means thinning this wall out and that height, and I'll get my height that I want out of this. Here we go, so I'm gonna wet down the inside and outside. So how do I do this? Well, I take my fingers from the inside and I push down, way down here at the floor, right? Right here, I'll push out down there, right, and push straight out. I don't dig down into the floor. I push straight out along the floor, right? And then here, I'll take my outside hand and push inward. But you'll, the trick is with this, let's bring this little example in, is that since I start way down here and I'm starting here, the inside hand will be taller or higher because of this extra clay. And I'll start this hand down at the wheel. I'll push and I'll go up. And you'll see here when I get here, do you see how the inside hand is higher than the outside hand, right? And you can see that I'm pushing. I'll be pushing kind of at a diagonal. So this I stopped halfway up and that's what we'll do with this one. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'll push in, but I'm actually kind of pushing in and up like that. This one, I think is just more like pushing out. It feels to me like it's just pushing out here, but it definitely feels like to me that I have to push harder from the outside. So here, I push and I push right here and I go up. So here, I'm gonna let go and I'll stop for a second. And so this is where I'm at. So if you look here, let's just take a good look at this. Right, so you see how this part should be thinner, this part is thicker, that's exactly what this is right here, right? So I started down here and I raised up, so I stopped halfway, you can see that right there. So you can see how this part of this clay is thicker, this part of this clay is thinner, so that's helping making it, making this whole thing a little bit taller, okay? So let's go, let's just finish the race. So never stop, ideally don't stop in the middle, but we're just stopping just to show you. So I'm gonna find my place here and here on the inside, outside, and I'll finish my raise going up. There we go. So you can see that raise now made that cylinder just a little bit taller. Now I always wanna do an evaluation. So I finish that first raising pull, but I wanna do an evaluation of how does this look? Let's look on the inside. So. What do we want ideally going in and around on this? Well, I want this wall to be even. This is my top priority right now as I'm raising to be even from top, this thickness, all the way down to the bottom thickness. So that's hopefully what you have. But if you don't have it, don't worry, right? What we'll do this next time is when we do the next raise, we can fix it. So what do I mean? If it's thicker down at the bottom, right? Way down here, right? We, what we'll do is we will um, try to make it thinner down there the next ray. So here, let's, so here, if it's thicker down here at the bottom, what we'll do is we'll just use more pressure down there during the next rays, and that will help thin it out down there. And then as we go higher, we will relax the pressure a whole bunch going up. Okay, so you need to be conscious of the thickness of your wall and if there's any variety of thickness. As I work and as I throw, it feels to me like I need to use less pressure here on the top half, 
right? And more pressure at the bottom to get the cylinder to be even. But for you, you may need to do different things. So always reevaluate how your cylinder looks each time. So now I'm gonna push, push again and go up. So here we go. We're gonna use pressure. This might be a little bit too close. So we'll raise this back up just a little bit. There we go. So now you get a good idea of my hand position. So I'm going here and here, and then I do my raise up like that. So I'm gonna push, push from both sides, and then I do my raise. So you see how I don't move my hands at all, right? I keep my hands in a fixed position all the way up. You see how they're connected together? Let's do that again. So you see how they're connected together. I'm using my hands together. So sometimes I'll push my hands together like this. Sometimes I'll cross over like that, like that, like that, like that. However you need to do it. Sometimes I use the saddle here of my, this between my thumb knuckles and I'll kind of ride these two. Any way you need to keep your hands fixed and locked together, you put pressure and you go up. Probably try not to throw with your hands separated out like this, where they're not touching each other and you're just trying to throw with them separate like this. Try not to throw like that because then they can kind of wobble around. If you have your hands touching and you push, push like that, you see how the outside hand is lower, I can push, push, and I can establish that and then go up. And it's kind of like a robot, I think of myself. I want to boom, and I want to make that gap. And then I just want to keep that gap and I go all the way up without moving my hands. All right, so let's do one more raise. So here. So each time I raise, right, I make the cylinder slightly taller. So here's a, another example. And you can see here that this example, as you get taller, the difference in thickness does not get as doesn't isn't as dramatic so it, you just need to thin it out just a little bit more in order for that cylinder to get a lot taller as your cylinder as your cylinder gets taller okay so once again though i need to always check about even thickness all the way down so here we'll do it one more time right and then we're going to raise up and then we are going to make it taller. So usually you get three shots at this and you can see how my cylinder's kind of straight. It's flaring out maybe just a little bit. So I'm just gonna push that in just a little like that. So now it's more straight up and down. I'm gonna wet the whole thing down and we'll do one, I think this will be the last raise. We'll squash in. So I'm pushing in from the outside really to get it thinner, right? And then we're gonna dig under and then I'm gonna go up. Right, so I'm making this cylinder taller. Hopefully, this is my last raise, I hope. We'll see. Right, it's always different when you're demoing. All right, so that felt really good. Um, let's take a look on the inside, right, and just see, because that's the part you can't see, because this part looks good, right? It's pretty straight up and down, pretty happy, but let's take a look at the inside. So the inside, is the inside straight all the way down? Is there an even thickness all the way down? Well, it kind of looks like it, but it can be hard to tell, right? So there's a couple, there's a technique that we can do. So I know that some of you were taught, right, to cut your cylinder in half. Oh, we don't want to cut our cylinder in half because we're hoping that this is going to be a cup. So what we can do is take our needle tool and stab it through so you see how the needle tool comes through the other side right and then I can just take my finger and push that needle tool back to the surface right so that tip of that needle is even with the surface of the inside of the clay and then I can mark it boop and that's how thick that wall is right well I could see that here but we can do that same technique all the way down so I'm gonna check a little bit farther down. Let's do it on this side. So I check here, right, is that thick? I'll check a little, like halfway down. Let's check again. Ooh, it's a, actually a little bit thinner, right? And let's check way down here at the bottom. Let's, let's see how it looks way down here at the bottom. I can't get my, so I'll have to do this one visually. It's about that thick down there at the bottom. So actually it's getting thinner as it goes down. So I can actually probably now this time, I could throw it and just make it, a little bit thinner and taller. Let's do that, right? So here, let's just wet the whole thing down. Let's just do it one more time, make the whole thing just a little bit thinner and taller. And then this time, I'm gonna thin out this just a little bit more. So you notice that I haven't been thinning out the top. Do not, if you can, thin out the top more than the rest of the cylinder until the very end. So here, we're just gonna go down we're gonna raise up again. There we go. I'm lightening up the pressure here. Wow, we're gonna make a big one out of this. All right, so we got quite a quite a lot of cylinder out of that. 
There we go. So there, and I see I let go. And so that's looking pretty good. It's flaring out a little. So now let's start cleaning it up. So that's about as thin as I want to make it, right, for this cup. So now I'm going to go in there and first order of business is for me to clean out the water at the bottom. So I have a throwing stick, so you can do all sorts of things, but I can't really get my hand down in there all the way to the bottom to get that to get that water out. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna stick my sponge down in there. And this is like a sponge on a stick thing and it's something I bought, but I usually have a, I also have sticks with actually sponge, sponges tied on to the end, but I don't have it this time. This is one that I bought. Um, I can't remember what this tool is called, but it's really good. So I'm gonna take this spongy like thing and just put it down there, mop up all the water. This is also time if there's any sort of mess up down there where I roughed up the bottom, this is a time when I would clean it up. Try to use this a little, this kind of sponge to kind of help clean up the bottom, make sure it's smooth and everything and happy. So this may take a few runs. So always clean the bottom up and then I'm gonna clean up the walls. So how do I clean up the walls? What I'm going to do for the walls is I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take two ribs and run them up and down the wall. So here I have these two ribs here, right? I'm going to take one on the inside, one on the outside, and kind of mush them against each other and just go up as the wheel is spinning. I start at the bottom here and go out. So I have to kind of stretch this cylinder out a little bit to get my hand inside. So that erases takes off all the slip right takes off all the slip and smooths out the surface kind of gets rid of those throwing lines if you notice that none of those artists that i showed you with the cups earlier had left throwing lines because a lot of them were decorating the surface right and doing their own work right so the throwing lines you can leave them that's perfectly fine or as a artist you can maybe if you don't want them erase them right i have a tendency to erase them right because i like the smooth surface in order to to, for to decorate or do things with. All right, so now I have this, right? So now it's ready to go. So I did the inside, I did the outside. Let's look at the rim. I'm just gonna compress that rim just a little because it's getting a little bit soft, right? So now I'm gonna undercut this a little bit because undercutting it now helps me see the form, right? So where's my undercutting tool? Huh. Oh, there it is. So I'm going to undercut this form and I'm just going to cut this first of all parallel with the edge all the way down. Right. There, and I'm just going to take that clay away. I'm not really undercutting. I'm just removing this excess stuff here. So now I have this beautiful thing that I've made. Now I have to think about the form that I want it to take. What shape do I want? Now this, I could stop here. This would be good, but Maybe I want something more like this, right? That has kind of a bulbous bottom and kind of has this thing going on top. Well, how would I do this? Well, you see how these are about the same size. So it looks like I could make this into this. So let's do that. So if you notice that there's kind of really two parts to this, right? There's this bulbous part and there's this highest part and it has kind of like this waist thing here, right? So we should, plan this out. I'm going to plan this out now. Where do I want these different parts to be, right? So if the waste part is here, that would actually need to transfer to about there on this, right? Straight across. So there needs to be, I'll just put a little mark with my needle tool, right there, straight across will need to be the thinnest part, right? So I cannot, after I'm done throwing it, right, this cylinder is not going to get taller, right, than it is. So let's just so that's the part where the waist is going to be. This whole bulbous part here needs to fit, this part here needs to fit just in that area right there, right? And then this part here will be that part there. So I can make that out of this. So let's do that. So just like I said, you should always have a good idea of what you want to make in the end, right? So I knew that this is the shape I wanted to make, right? So it doesn't mean that you're going to get the shape that you want. It just means that you have a target to start with. Kind of like, you know, like when you're going on a journey and an adventure, right? Sometimes you don't, might not get there, but you should make, you should have plans before you get, before you start. All right. So here I kind of erasing that mark because I already know where that waste is going to be. So this part's the part I'm going to bulbous 
out. Boop. So I have my throwing stick. So I got this long time ago, but you can look online for these. Um, but you could also take a, any sort of small wooden spoon or even just a metal wooden spoon, and you could use that to push this bottom part out. So here we go. I'm gonna take this and then push this, use that to push this bottom part out. So I'm being super aware of where I want the waist here. So that's gonna be my waist. So I'm trying to push out below the waist part right there. So you see that, how it's slowly starting to push out? So that was one push, right? So you can see how it pushed out a little, but it's not there yet, right? And I'm gonna push it out again. So I'm starting to form out this bulbous bottom. There, I'm gonna look inside just for a second, just to make sure I haven't messed anything up. Everything inside looks fine, so let's push it out again. So from now on, I'm basically gonna look at the outside. So I could keep bulging that out, right, if I want to, but I'm okay with that for right now. Maybe I'm gonna bulge just a little bit more. So I could walk this waist up. So right now the waist is looking like it's right about there. I could walk it up by pushing this out more, but right now, let me just push it up just a little bit more. All right, there we go. There we go. So now I get to worry about this part right here. So I kind of work my way up from bottom to top. So that I established the kind of bulbous -y bottom. Now I'm gonna shape this, right? So remember that this is all part of my, don't, um, that it, <laughs> this is all part of the, it, a little means a lot, right? So I can do just little changes like this, right? So I'm just pushing out this part right here with my fingers on the inside, right? And you can see how the flavor and the shape of the this, this pot has changed a lot just in those few moves, right? That I created a, like a completely different form. For a second ago, it was just a tapering cup, right? It kind of went narrower and was widest at the top. Now I've changed that, right? It's still wide here, but it has a waist and then it gets wide again. So I've kind of created a different sort of vibe. So within your cups, little small changes mean a lot. And so as a potter, you need to figure out where should those changes happen. All right. So now to emphasize a waist, I like to put a mark on there. So if you see this right here, I have this mark on there. I'll show you how to do that. Because the mark helps to add tension right to the piece. So to put that mark on, I just use anything that kind of has a right angle, sharp right angle to it. So I could use this thing here, my angle square. This thing, I'll usually use this rib here. Well, let me dip this in water, so there. So what I'm gonna do is just use this square and just kind of jiggle it up and down as it's spinning. So here, I spin the wheel super slow and just slowly go up and down, right here. And I, there, I'm already on the second layer. There, so you see how that mark just kind of helps emphasize what's happening at that. And you see how even that mark now changed how the cup looks, right? So now let's, clean up now that putting the mark in changed the form a little bit. So I will come back with this guy and then just kind of bulb this, this part because it flattens out this curve here a little bit. So I like to come back in here. So I'm pushing right here with the inside of the stick, pushing right out. There we go, you see that? So I go from top down to bottom. I'm pushing that, oop, I changed the form a bunch there by mistake. Ooh, that's looking really good. So it has kind of a fullness down there now. It reestablishes that. And then I'm just gonna come back in here. Maybe what I'll do here at the rim is instead of messing with this curve here, I'm gonna bring this curve, I'm gonna bring this top part just in by a little bit. So I'm gonna wet this down the top and bring it in just a little bit, right? Just a little bit like that. So the energy of the cup changes just a little bit. You see how that comes, it starts off kind of coming out and then it, and it has that curve and then maybe pops back in. To emphasize the coming out, I may push this part out just a little bit right here too. So for me, these small changes mean a lot for me, right? Re just making these small changes mean a lot. So because that I believe that as a potter, I believe a lot in form. Right, and that's what's happening here on the wheel is establishing that form. So that looks pretty good. Um, let's, we could trim off the rim if we want to. So I'll just hold this steady. I hold this like a pencil in my right hand. I use the very tip to bring this in. So let's get a close up view of this. So here I hold it like a pencil 
Let's straighten it out, see if we can get a good view. So I hold this like a pencil, right, like that, and I'll just bring it in and I'll use just the very tip to scrape along the outside edge to create like a line. And then each revolution, I slowly push the needle tool in until it gets to the other side. And then it comes off. So I don't jab the needle tool in all the way through at once. I just slowly, 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 slowly push in it as it's turning until I get out the other side. So that cleaned up my rim a little bit. So let's flatten it out and round it now, right? Because I kind of had the rim there because it was a little bit bumpy. That's why we cut it off. And then we will take a chamois and we'll round the rim off. Oh, where's my hand? There's my chamois. There we'll round the rim. And then this is done. And then what we're going to do is I got one of these ready to trim and we'll trim it for you. We'll talk about trimming here in a second. So these guys, so remember, I told you that I was not throwing on a bat because I like just lifting these guys off by hand. So let's get a good view from that. There we go. So here I have it set. I have a bat ready here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take my neat wire tool, which is here, and I'm going to wire this off and I'm just going to lift this guy off. I'll take my hands and I dry them off really quick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it off. So I dried my hands off on my towel and I'm just going to hold it like this and kind of friction lift this baby off. I like this because I can get like 10 of these cups on this bat and it doesn't take up um, very much space. So we'll set that aside and then let's trim one. So here's the one that we have ready to trim. So this is one I threw a little while ago. So it's ready to trim. So let's talk about what we're going to do. So this cup here is the same as this cup here, right? So we're looking at that cup and it has this extra mass of clay because that's the only part we couldn't finish. Boop, 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 boop. So let's look at the inside. Let's look at that guy right from right here. That's what we have. And then this doo, 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 is what we're going to change it into, right? So within that space, right, within this mass down here at the bottom, that foot will get carved out of here. We'll leave a slob of clay, a little bit of clay here, and we'll carve out the middle, right? So that's the theory from, from this to this. All right, so let's get this cup on there. So let me clean off my wheel a little bit. Clean off all the water, and then we're gonna do this, put this cup on there. Now these cups are pretty tall, right? So I, um, they will be a little wobbly when I trim, so I just gotta be careful. So I'm gonna tap center like that to get it on. So I can already feel that this, um, let's do this other technique. So there's another technique where you can wet the rim just very lightly. So I just put water on the rim and I'm gonna moosh this around on here and then get it so it starts sticking and then I'll tap center it so it'll be on there. So this is a little bit of a different technique for getting your pieces to stick. So that's it right there. And then uh, I hold it down and do this tap, 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 tap. And that usually, nope, it didn't work. All right, we're gonna have to hold it down with clay. I think because the rim is slightly off on this guy. So I didn't cut the rim off, I don't think, because I thought I could get away with it. So I'm tap centering, tap centering. That's pretty good. So I'll just use some clay here. There we go. Let's bend this around like that. Push it down. So I'm using pretty big blobs of clay because this needs to stay in one place and it's pretty tall. So I will use taller taller chunks and bigger chunks of clay for these taller pots. So here, right there, pull this down. So luckily for these cups, I do not have that much to trim, right? Because I was really focused on throwing an even cylinder at the beginning. So when I look at my profile of my of my cylinder, right, you can see that it is, should be pretty even thickness, even thickness, and I only really need to take off just a little bit there or a little bit down here. It's okay if your cylinder gets thicker as it gets down closer to the bottom. That's pretty normal, right? You just trim where you need to, right? Don't worry about how thick it is, right, that much. There we go. So there, now I'm ready to trim. So here, let's just mark off where I would put the foot. So on this guy, I'll probably put the foot right there. And I'll put the inside of the foot right there. So I'll trim off this part of the clay here, right? I'll trim off this part of the clay here and this part of the clay on the inside. And I'm going to leave that clay right there. And that will be my foot ring. All right. So let's always start with the sure form. 
So today we'll use this one, right? And it's like a cheese grater. I've shown this before in my videos. It does a really good job of trimming off clay. We can get a view of it trimming off clay if we do this, right? It does a great job of help rounding. It's a great tool because you do not need to think too hard. You can be pretty relaxed when you use this tool. It's absolutely great. Right, I use these. These are always out and around because I use them every day, just about. All right, so I got down to that line, my outside line. So that's about as far as this Sureform tool can trim because of that. I and then because of that, right? If I use it anymore, I'll start trimming into the foot. Now here, I want to establish this curve. So I have this beautiful belly here and I love that curve to come around and into here. So it's starting to look like that, but I haven't trimmed my foot yet. So I need to trim my foot in. So here I'll switch to a different trimming tool here. <laughs> Here we go. Here I'll switch to a different trimming tool here. So I like using these Dolan kind of square tools for trimming. And then what I do is I'll attack it from here. Use this part of that tool and use that to trim right here. So this clay is a little bit on the wet side. It's a little bit grabby. So I'm establishing the outside of that foot. Let's switch to a different tool. I don't like using those tools when they're when the clay is this wet. So here we'll just use this tool. This is much better. So now I establish the outside of my foot. You see that? So now I'm going to establish the curve here, right here. I'm going to trim this curve in. Because right now this curve, and then it goes boop, it disappears into there. So what I want is for this curve to be a smooth curve coming all the way into the foot. And the foot, I hope, is opposite the flat part of the inside. So here I'm going to trim this back right here. Trim, trim, trim. Trim, trim, trim. So what I'm trying to do is make, try to trim something where this curve just kind of continues around into right there. And it goes flat right at the edge of the foot where the curve stops and starts becoming the base. There we go. So you see trim, 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 trim. There we go. So that's getting there, right? And you can see how quickly that happens because there wasn't actually that much clay I needed to trim off, right? So I'm feeling pretty happy about that. And now I'll come back and I'll trim the inside. So when I trim the inside of this foot, I want the inside this level to be the same level as this, right? So this, this right here, I'll trim this down so that the height of the whole, the whatever the height of this is, is the same height as that. So I'll use, sometimes I'll just flip this around and use this side of this tool like this. Do the inside there. So I started, we'll do it one more time. Go. I'm gonna do it one more time. So it's still looking, this is still looking higher than this. So I'll keep trimming down till I get it. All right, so that's looking close, right? So the height of this is now, let's do see it so you guys can see. So the height of that is looking pretty good, right? So just from the side, this is looking close. This is looking close. Now I just need to come through and clean up everything to make, the, make this look more polished. Some people leave these trimming lines in there. I take them out, but I, I get it why people leave it in there because it has this beautiful like swirl mark and all that. I love, I love that look on some people's pots and it's just not for me. So I trim those lines out. I like the smoothness down there. There we go. Look at that. So that is now smooth, right? And then I'm trimming up the foot, just narrowing this foot just a little bit to make it a little bit more narrow. And then I'm gonna clean up the outside here. There we go. And then I'll clean up this part here now. I leave all this clean up here till the end because sometimes I'm not sure on whether I'm gonna like what I have inside here. Sometimes I have to make adjustments. So I don't do the clean up till now. There and there, clean that up. So now I'm just gonna, so I rounded this foot off because I like the profile of this foot to be rounded. You see how this, the outside edge of this foot comes up here, right? And then it has a rounded top. I love having a rounded top for my feet because that makes this foot much stronger. So when I'm sending this down on like a counter, if you're rough 
on it and you set it down pretty hard, pretty hard, pretty hard, there's no part of that that really wants to chip off. The edges don't want to chip off because it's completely rounded. That's nice and strong. So that's what I'm going to do here is I've trimmed off the outside edge here, trimmed off the outside edge there, an inside edge, I guess, of the foot. Now I'm just going to come through and I'm going to smooth it out some with my finger, or I could take my rib here and smooth it out like this. There we go. This will make it nice and smooth and beautiful. And I'm gonna come back again and just, there's a little bit of clay that folded over. So I'll come back and trim that clay off there. Trim off this clay off here. There we go. So I'm almost done. So let's pull it off and take a look because now the foot is done. It's looking pretty good. Just one other quick assessment. It looks like I wish I, I'm gonna trim off just a little bit more right there because there's a little bit something wrong with that curve right there. So I'm gonna trim that off. There we go. That looks a little, no, a little bit more. There we go. So I'm just tidying up the curve because I just didn't quite like it. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna use a rib to smooth out the curve here. So I can use my rib here to help try to smooth all that clay out. Because the clay is a little bit wet, I can use this rubber rib to re-smooth out that surface to, so it doesn't look trimmed as much there and then let's take a look all right so there you go made a cup out of one pound ball of clay and then i trimmed it let's add my chop finishing touch bam so if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the chat area in the comment section all right everyone thanks for watching Woohoo!